Welcome back to Crypto Craze, everyone. Central banks are scrambling to react to the rise of digital currencies and their powers could be tested by new types of money. Hello, new money, and hello, Jalak Jobin Putra, who is the managing director at Future Perfect Ventures, which has invested in companies including BitPesa, Abra, and Token. Great to have you here with us today. Great to be here, thanks. What do central banks need, what do central banks need to do in order to protect its business model? Well, traditionally, central banks have used monetary policy as a, you know, a political tool, as an economic tool. And one of the biggest stories in, in the digital currency space in 2019 was the announcement of Facebook's Libra. Yeah. Now, imagine a currency that crosses borders uh, that people have direct access to without going through their own fiat currencies. Uh, that could mean less demand for uh, central bank currencies or central bank control currencies. And what we've seen is a reaction by countries such as China, potentially India, to create their own digitally tracked uh, currencies so that they don't lose that control. How, how would that affect us as consumers? Well, I, I would say that we need to be very careful as consumers. We're living more and more in a surveillance state, right? Um, uh, we, we're seeing our actions being tracked, uh, face recognition from yeah. everywhere. Uh, now, imagine if every transaction we made, sometimes we use cash, um, you know, a lot of credit card information is being tracked now, but imagine if every transaction was now being tracked, uh, that puts a lot of power into the hands of the government and even more power than they already have. Are consumers showing that they're not comfortable with that right now? I mean, I think about some of the peer-to-peer -peer payments that take place and it's really just a live feed of every single friend, known, some of them unknown, yes. that just happen to be friends through another app that you've already paired your Venmo or your Cash App with, and you see every single one of their transactions that have taken place. And so it seems like the next generation, they're latching on to FinTech that is more transparent, but perhaps that's to our own detriment? I don't know. Well, that, that's a great point. If you look at Venmo, their uh, default was being able to share or, or sharing transactions. You actually had to turn that off. Sure. Um, I would argue that we're living in a slightly different time now than, say, when Venmo launched. Right. When um, it's one thing sharing things with your friends, it's another thing when uh, governments, uh, large companies mm -hmm. now have access to that information and what we've seen happen over, fa you know, with Facebook over the last couple of years has shown that there are real dangers to that full transparency. Generation Z, um, you know, past the millennials are a lot more privacy focused than previous generations. So it, it's, it's an ongoing process of education. We're seeing more privacy laws. California just enacted its, uh, its privacy law as of January 1st. Yeah. Uh, we've had GDPR in, in uh, Europe. So there's more and more, I'd say, consumer awareness of the detriments of this transparency. All right, so you mentioned um, Facebook's Libra, or the Libra Association's Libra. Uh, we know that China is planning a digital currency of its own any day now. Um, there's this idea of countries digitizing their existing sovereign currencies. There's also, you know, what Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, put out um, a few months ago, this idea of a new currency that would be a global currency backed by a basket of government currencies that could replace the U.S. dollar. Um, as the world's reserve currency. How does that fit into the idea of digitizing the sovereign currencies and just the whole idea of the central bank model being under threat? Well, what, what you point out um, around regional currencies, that's another thing that we're starting to see where there has been a lot of reliance on the US dollar as, as the world's uh, reserve currency. And not every region, not every country is happy with, with that situation. Uh, it gives the U.S. a lot of uh, control. Uh, so we're seeing a reaction on the regional side, um, and, and a lot of the BRICS countries are also starting to think about, you know, do, do we form our own monetary association? Now, what we've seen with the euro, there, there are a lot of challenges to that. There are a lot of geopolitical issues uh, uh, that come into play. Uh, that don't have to do necessarily with the economics. So I, I think it'll be a long time before we actually see that kind of global cooperation or regional cooperation happen. But everything has been digitized over the last 20, 25 years. And it, it's interesting how we still use 
pieces of paper <laughs> to transact, and a lot of the world still does that. And, and so uh, it, it would be kind of obvious that, uh, that currency would be more digitized as we move into the 21st century. Okay, so the premise of this conversation and the, the question that all of our viewers are seeing right now, the central bank and its correlation to cryptocurrency, is the central bank at risk or under attack, that model under attack? The central bank, it's an independent national authority. Its role, conduct monetary policy, regulate banks, and then provide financial services. How can Bitcoin or cryptocurrency as a whole accomplish all of these things? Or digital currency. Well, digital, so, so there's a difference between Bitcoin and digital currency, sure, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Bitcoin is truly decentralized. There's no one entity that controls mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Uh, it's really controlled by code. Uh, central bank digital currencies, sovereign currencies would be very different. That would be just digitizing what we use as paper and, and tracking every transaction. So there's a, I, I'd say they couldn't be more different in a lot of ways. Now where those uh, uh, sovereign digital currencies could be under threat is if people decide not to use their local fiat currencies and, and go directly to something that's completely decentralized like Bitcoin. And then that would mean that uh, if more and more people are not using the fiat currencies, there's less control that the central bank or governments can have uh, through monetary policy. Absolutely. A very huge conversation. Uh, we know it's ongoing. We have to have you back to elaborate and talk even more about this. Jalak Joban Putra, who is the managing director at Future Perfect Ventures, joining us. Thanks so much. Well, thanks for having me.